bundling, taking two products, putting them together and then selling them together on Amazon. It's one of the most effective ways to stand out, to increase the perceived value of your product so our customers choose you over the competition. But how do you do that? What's the process look like? Right? On top of that, how do you know what products should go together, what are gonna sell together? Well, today I'm gonna explain the entire process, go over it with you, tell you how to do it, what to look for, and also cover the one mistake that actually makes bundling less effective, the one mistake that most bundles suffer from that causes them to sell less than the rest. I'm in the jungle. I'm in the Amazon. I'm in the jungle. I'm in the Amazon. What's up, Empire Builders? JT Franco here, the no bullshit Amazon seller. So if you wanna learn about Amazon FBA without the bullshit, then make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you already are an Empire Builder, welcome back, hopefully your empire is going strong. So let's get into this, bundling, right? How does it work? I'm gonna cover the whole process. I see questions about this all the time because I always talk about differentiation, right? Differentiating your product, making it different, making it stand out. And bundling is a great way to do that. Now the thing about bundling is that there's a lot of pitfalls too. There's a lot of ways that, uh, you know, it can go wrong if you choose the wrong bundle, uh, if you do certain things. So we're going to start off with how do you bundle? Okay. So let's jump to the computer here. All right. So we're on my little drawing board and I'm gonna make this really simple, really quick. So here's product A, right? And here's product B. And you assume that, you know, you did your research and you know that these products are going to sell well if you're bundling together, right? It's going to increase the value. It's going to increase the demand of the product. Uh, and it's going to be something great. The problem is you need to put them together. Right, so the first question I get is, so what do you do? You do you just order product A and order product B and then send them separately into Amazon, right? And then Amazon uh, boxes them for you? No, right, that's, that's not how that works. You gotta, you gotta do that first yourself. So the first thing you gotta do is make sure you get them in a box together um, yourself. So you can do that in two ways. You can either have you know, a, a supplier, you just product A, product B, let's say supplier one and supplier two. You can have one supplier, like supplier one, that makes both of the products. So they create both products, you know, product A, product B, and they put them in a box together for you. That's the easy way to do it. You know, if you can do that, I would suggest doing that because that's gonna, it's just easier, it's gonna save you cost most of the time. Um, but if you can't do that, then you can get supplier one and supplier two uh, to work together. So you get supplier one, makes product A, sends it over to supplier two, uh, and then supplier two will now have product A and product B, um, and then they can box it together to, for you and then send that into Amazon, right? Um, alternative, now the thing about this, you only need one barcode, right? One FN SKU. So that's another question I get. How many FN SKUs do you need? You only need one FN SKU, which is going to go on the main box. Okay. Um, and that's that. Um, and another question I get is who does the designing, right? So in the case of this, I would have supplier two do the, the design. So you send, you know, you get your design made. This is your box design, right? It's a beautiful box that you got made, um, with like flowers on it or whatever the heck that is supposed to be. You get that made. The design, right? The, the actual the die lines. So a die line, if you don't know, is like it's a it's a box that has like a laid out. So if you're to lay out, cut a box open um, and lay it out flat, that's what a die line is, right? So you get that all made and, and designed, and then you send that into supplier two, and they'll do that for you and design it and send that into Amazon. Now the thing is, if you want to have them individually done, like you have this this is a designed. Uh, product A and product B are separately packaged or separately designed inside the main package, then you're gonna have to send designs both ways. Um, but for the most part, it's supplier two will send it in and then he sends it into Amazon and you're done, right? That's a bundle, that's how it's done. You gotta make sure those products are together in a box, one box, that's how it's gonna be sorted and organized in Amazon. When it arrives to a customer's door, this is your customer, um, they get you know this big box, okay? And that's that, so that's how bundling is done. Okay, so now that you know how that works, we're gonna go actually look at examples and see you know, how do you know what you should do for product A and should do product B? What products should you pick? How do you know what products are gonna go well together? Uh, and how can you kind of get an idea of that? So the biggest mistake you can make with making a bundle is picking the wrong item to pair it with. Okay, so let's look at, you know, we're gonna have a look at an example here. I'll let me zoom out a little bit. Um, this is called a label maker, okay? Label maker, and you'll see there's like this product like this, it prints out labels, and then you're gonna see bundles that look like this, right? Um, or maybe not that one, just look like one. Here, like a label maker here, it comes with, you know, the labels or the whatever these are called. It comes with these, yeah, I guess they're called um, just label print or whatever the hell these are. Um, line printing or, or, oh, here you go, two tapes, right? So it comes with uh, these two tapes. So this would be a bundle. Instead of just selling the label maker, they, you're selling the label maker tapes as well. So how can you see, you know, what's the, the first thing I'll, I'll look at for a product? Um, so let's go out to one of these and just click on one that doesn't have, that's not selling with tapes. It's just a label maker on its own. Um, so the first, click please. So now we're in here and we're gonna look at frequently bought together. So frequently bought together for this is a charging cord because I guess this one is not 
you know, the not chargeable one. So let's click on this one. And we're just gonna keep on clicking, right? Freely bought together. Is this the tapes? There you go. Refills. Yeah, so that, there you go. There's, the, there's the, the tapes, the refills that we saw for the first thing. So the first thing you're always gonna look at is frequently bought together to see ideas of, okay, if people are buying this, what else are they buying with this product? So that's kind of your first indicator to get some clues. Now, I'm not gonna rely solely on frequently bought together because you know sometimes it's gonna be something like what you saw with the charger. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna look at is the reviews, right? So let's go ahead and look at, example. well, we don't need to go to an example, but we're, we're gonna go, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the reviews um, and look at what they're saying, right? If they're saying, you know, it runs, out of, it runs out of tape quickly, I wish it came with more tape, something like that, then you're gonna know, okay, there's, there's a demand for this in the people that are actually buying this product, because that's the key. You need to know that there's a demand for the, this bundle by the people that are actually buying this product. Just because you think something's gonna go well together doesn't mean it's going to go well together, right? You gotta know data and, and what people actually want. And one of the best ways to do that is to do keyword research. So look for what people are searching, right? If you know what people are searching, you know what people are gonna want. So let's go ahead into what we did. I went to Viral Launch, right? Go to keyword research here and you go to search. Okay, so keyword research, go to search. You need the, I think, pro uh, Viral Launch to get this. If you want Viral Launch, you don't have it already, link in the description, you get 20% off. Now, what we're gonna do is put label maker in here, search it out, and then it's gonna pop pop up the um, keywords, right? Related keywords. So Label Maker is uh, the biggest one, right? 71,000 volume estimate. That's per month. So we got Label Maker Machine, Label Printer, right? Dymo Label, and that's one of the brands that we saw. Brother, there's another brand. So what we're gonna look for is see if anyone is actually searching for your bundle idea. So you look at Freaking About Together, you had the idea of, hey, maybe I should sell this with the tape, right? The extra tape. Uh, so we're just gonna keep on scrolling and see if people are actually searching for that. And right here, I just hit Control F, you can see label maker with tape included. Okay, so you got, you know, 562 searches a month for that. So that's an indicator that, hey, people are actually looking for this. You know, it's nothing compared to the 71,000. That would uh, search, you know, uh, label maker tape and then see if the people are searching for tape with label maker or how the, the label maker tape um, searches are looking. Okay, so that is the next thing you're gonna look at in deciding, hey, are people actually looking for this or is this just some weird idea that I came up with in my head? So those are some of the ways you can look for bundle and see you know, what product can I put together. Um, and there's something else you wanna consider when bundling. Um, once you found a product and you, and you kind of think, okay, maybe I should, you know, can I pair it with this? Think about how important is this bundle item with the product, right? Is it just an accessory item or is it a necessary item? So a necessary item would be an example like this, right? A label maker, you need the tape to, or else so a label maker doesn't work. It's like car and a gasoline, right? That's a, that's a good bundle because they need both of those for the product to work, right? Or, you know, you've seen those like um, essential oil uh, diffuser things that are like humidifiers almost. You need those oils to work. Is it a necessary bundle or is it something that is just a nice to have? Example of that would be my laptop here. See, I have the Surface laptop and it, there's a pen, right? I can write on it like I was just doing on the screen earlier but I don't need this pen for this to work. I can use my finger, you know, I can use it as a laptop regularly. That's kind of something that's like, yeah, that'd be really sick to have it together, but it's not necessary. And then there's the accessory items where it's it's, it's just kind of related to each other, but they're, they really don't go together at all. So example of that would be like, if you're selling a dog collar and then you're selling a chew toy, sure they're dog products, but they're not, they're not hand in hand. You don't need one for the other. It doesn't even really go together as a product. And that's where you run into problems of your, your bundle failing because now uh, you've done something called, you know, you split the market. And we'll talk about that in a second, but the next thing I wanna talk about here is pricing. So when you're creating a bundle, you need to make sure that you're still profitable, right? You need to be profitable on these products together. So whatever the purchase price is, whatever you can find to sell on Amazon, when you're going to FBA calculator and you're calculating the price you know, of manufacturing, you gotta think now, okay, now I gotta manufacture both of these products, right? And what's the cost gonna be of that? And if you have a supplier that doesn't make both of the products, like in the, you know, supplier one doesn't make product A and product B, now you gotta think, okay, now I got to pay for the shipping for, to get this product, product A, to supplier two. So now you gotta think of the extra costs that are included. And then once you figure that out, you gotta think, how much can you really sell this product for? You don't wanna sell a bundle um, and just have it be the two combined prices. So if your label machine is $30 and your tape is usually selling for $10 on Amazon, you don't wanna just sell them together and price them for 40 bucks. You wanna make it seem like the customer is getting a deal by buying yours and you know getting something for free. You wanna make it seem like you're getting this label maker and you're getting the tape for free as a bonus. It can't be you know just the combined prices of two, otherwise, what's the point of going with yours, right? So that's the kind of things you have to consider when pricing it and, and bundling and knowing the cost because yeah, sometimes you have a great bundle but it's just not cost effective and you just have to scrap the idea, all right? Now the last thing I wanna go back to using the pen here 
And we're gonna talk about the, the big mistake that a lot of people are making uh, that can really, really, really hurt you in the long run. And you know, in the short run, make you lose your entire investment here. So the one thing you wanna ask yourself when you're creating your bundle is, am I splitting my market? Now, the thing with bundling is that, yeah, it's great to have two products that sell together, but sometimes you can actually be lowering the amount of potential customers you have by putting two products together. And I'll show you what I mean here. So say you have this product here, this orange product and this blue product, right? So let's say that these are actually markets. So you know you have a, your product here and your product here, and this is the, the big circle represents the amount of customers that are buying this product. So you have a lot of customers here, right? These are all customers, 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 right? Customers, customers, and they're all buying this product and this product. So you see on you know viral launch, you see the sales like whoa, these products here have uh, a huge customer base. A lot of people buying these products. So what if I went ahead and I actually sold these products together, right? So you grab this product here and you put, grab this product here and you sell them together, right? And you put them in one box, boom. Now the idea is that you have both of these markets now, right? So you have all these customers in here buying the product and all these customers here buying your product and you combine them and you put them together, so now you are gonna make double the sales. You make it, you know, because no one else has put these products together before, so now you're gonna have all these sales. But that's not actually the case, because what's actually happening is instead of combining these markets together, right? So most people think it looks like this. Whoa, now I have these two markets together and they're, they're huge, right? What actually happens sometimes is it's more like this. Boop. So you have, these customers, right? It's like a Venn diagram. So you have all these customers in here. Whoa, so many sales. And all these customers in here, oops, right? And they, this customer base wanted this product, this customer base wanted this product, but really putting them together, you only have now this sliver of customers that wanted these products together. So instead of having you know, either or this huge market over here or this huge market over here, you've, you've actually split the market and now you have only this tiny sliver of people that were willing, that wanted to buy these two products together and you've actually decreased your market and you've made it hell of a lot harder to, to move your product. So you gotta know that you know, when you bundle a product, it's actually gonna be putting two marks together. It's gonna be creating a higher demand and not a lesser demand with your product. Because I see this something, you know, people do this all the time. Like, oh, this product is really hot. This product is really hot and they're related. So boom, I, you know, I marry them together and all of a sudden I have a hot product. Well, actually you've just created, you know, a horrible marriage that's gonna end in a fiery divorce. And that is what's gonna happen if you don't, you know, take this into account and really look at this and really, really do your research. Look at the keyword, you know, I skimmed it over a little bit, like looking at the frequently bought together, looking at the reviews, looking at the keywords, making sure there's actually demand, people that actually are searching for these products together already. You don't wanna just, you know, put two products together because you think it's gonna be a good idea. You wanna put two products together because people want them to be put together uh, and you are the one that's gonna offer it to them. So that's how you bundle. That's the whole process of how it works. That's how you're gonna make them getting created, get it made, get it shipped you know, into Amazon, what you're looking for, uh, and the things that you need to look out for when you're creating a bundle. So at the end of the day, bundling is all about creating value. And if you wanna create a bundle right now, like literally right, right now, a very, very valuable bundle, what you can do, you can click that subscribe button and then click the like button at the same time um, and that's gonna be a very valuable bundle for me. If you like this video, please do that. And then if you want more videos, click that video right over there or click my face to subscribe. You can also click the button, bottom button to um, you know join my master class. That's my limited time training and that's a bundle right there on that side of the screen for you. So make your choice. Uh, I'm JT Franco, don't forget your empire awaits. I am made to be free.